Okay, this is what to do with your position after you've determined you've gone on the other side of the wall. So here's our familiar diagram, P1 and P2. Our velocity has taken us across the wall. So write that expression down again. P2 equals P1 plus our velocity times the delta time that we got in our update. So let me mark up this wall again. This end point we said we from convention we'll go right from left so this is from right to left. There's V1 and V2 and we'll draw a normal vector on this wall. This is part of the data that we store in our wall before the game starts. This is N. It's a unit vector. Points in the direction towards safe gameplay or inbounds. Okay. So we determined that we've gone across the wall in one comparison. We calculated that distance in another. That distance, these are perpendicular distances. Both of these are calculated by subtracting a wall endpoint from position and dotting it with n to get this distance here. So P1 and P2 give us two different distances. One's going to be negative on the bad side of the wall. We want to be positive. That's how we detected that we crossed the wall. So we want to know how to modify this position. Um, what can we change the position to? Call it P3. Where should we end up? Well, one thing you can do, simplest answer would be, let's put the position back at P1. We went across the boundary. We want to get back to a safe place. Just return it back to P1. Um, that'll work, especially if we reflect our velocity. That's good enough. But if you want to travel you know, up to the wall and stop its position into the wall there and travel, continue on here, then all we have to do is take P2 minus this vector that you know, we calculated which is P2 minus V1 dot N. Sometimes we call that S. So that equals P2, sorry, S is this, this, is this distance here, this vector here. Okay, so this vector back across the, uh, to the wall, we'll call it Q. So that would be P2 minus V1 dot N gives us an amount to go back times N because a dot product just gives us a scalar. We want it times a direction. So we do want to come back this way. So P2 minus V1 is negative. Uh, dot N is going to still going to be pointing in this direction. So this is Q. We want to subtract that from P2. So let's say P3 equals P2 minus Q. And that's the same thing as P2 minus all this over here. Let's write it all out. P2 minus V1 dot N times N. Okay? We, we can say that will get us up to the wall and travel along it during the rest of the time step. And if we want to do a full-on bounce, so ship comes up to the wall, bounces off, off, and we end up, you know, using up the same amount of distance traveled across the wall back again. Uh, that's just subtracting that vector twice. One, two. So here's where, you know, I would say a very nice version of P3 would be is P2 minus twice that one, that vector, which is P2 minus V1 dot N times N. So this twice, again, we can modify. If you're going to allow some of the energy to be absorbed by this wall, then a little more complicated is going to be P2 minus 1 plus C. That's going to range, if C goes from 0 to 1, it's going to range from 1 to 2. 
times the same vector here, p2 minus v1 dot n times n. These are unit vectors here. Uh, C0 will stop you at the wall and travel along the wall. And 2, or C as 1, gets you all the way back to here as a full reflection. And somewhere in between will absorb some of the energy and you'll end up a vector somewhere along this line here. And you're, you're, uh, you want to keep your velocity and your position in step here, what kind of coefficient you're using. Do the same thing that you do to position as you do to, to velocity as far as that coefficient goes and everything will match up. So that's a really good way to do a collision response position. It's very similar to the velocity. Similar expression here and you're done.